Hello and welcome to Chess Please and today is a very auspicious day here at the Chess Please HQ because we have finally crossed 2000 ELO, that is right, we are in the vaunted air of the 2000s, kind of. Now let me explain, for most of this channel's history and most of my time playing chess, I've always played on chess.com and chess.com has a competitor that you may or may not be aware of called Lee Chess. Now Lee Chess is kind of like the open source, more free version of chess, like it's a lot of like funded by donations rather than the maybe like polished SaaS software product that chess.com is. Both have their merits and demerits. The reason I play on both is, funny enough, I started playing Lee Chess when I wanted to play games of chess that I did not care about the rating because chess.com was always like the one I cared about. That was like the goal that I was chasing. Any new increments that I've like shared on this channel have been on my chess.com account. But what would happen is I would go to Lee Chess when I just wanted to kind of turn my brain off, play some chess, play some like rating stress free chess. But ironically, I because I was playing rating free and I was like much more focused on the chess than the ratings, I started winning a lot of games, which was great. And I started going up and up the rankings to a point where against my best you know, wishes and advice to other people, I did start caring about that rating. Up to the point where I was within striking distance of 2000. And again, my like lizard brain just likes that nice round number. It doesn't really mean anything because actually Lee Chess and Chess.com have like slightly different, not balancing for their ELO, but your starting point is higher on Lee Chess. So 2000 on Lee Chess actually equates to about 1800 on Chess.com, which is where we stand. But all the same, I like to see the big number. I like to see the zeros. Sue me, whatever. And how we got there was pretty interesting. So let's jump into the final game that got me across the threshold because it was a sweaty one. So this was the game in question. We are playing as the Black Pieces against a 2050 rated player and we are rated 1994. So very much in striking distance of that 2000 bracket. Playing a better player, we know that this win would get us in there so admittedly we're very very sweaty and very nervous and i think actually that comes through in how we play it's not really how i normally play style wise but it ends up being a pretty interesting game so i go with my trusted sicilian uh, a little e6 sicilian i love these kind of a timing of um basically you just want to put a lot of pressure on this square and my opponent has gone for uh, what's known as a marazzi bind kind of setup here where you kind of create this weird like awkward looking backward pawn here kind of a strange setup that you won't like you won't normally advise this setup but you basically trade off this really really weak square for a stern control over this square that's a marazzi bind there's a lot more study on this that i haven't done but that's how they've set up and again me thinking like with the rating in my head and being like okay we gotta win don't do anything stupid end up going for a really closed game where there's just like a lot of caginess there's a lot of sorting out our armies you'll notice like it's going to take a long time before either of us moves a piece into the other person's territory i have a pawn here but in terms of like peace invasions it takes a long time so we're just like slowly cagily developing a couple of like brief uh improving moves again just this move only purpose is to keep this knight out of our territory so it's all very turtly it's all very like okay i'm just gonna set up gonna let them make a mistake very slowly improve our position um again scared out of my absolute mind which isn't how you should play chess the whole point of this account was to be not scared um but the fear found me in the end and i used the fear so fear is the mind killer so here we have basically all of our pieces developed we have our rooks connected everything off the back rank except the rooks and i'm thinking okay we're actually in pretty steady eddy territory the queen is a little misplaced i don't i didn't really love that uh, but i think we can actually start to think about breaks on the king side so we move our knight out of the way to free up this pawn to potentially look at an f5 little break uh, which we do get once they move their knight out of the way again still no pieces in opponent territory everyone's just it's a very peaceful game so far in fact has there been a capture i don't even know if there's been a single capture as yet uh, there hasn't been even uh, until now they take and all hell does not break loose we all still play pretty cagey uh, a couple of trades here we trade off the light square bishops 
I get my rooks onto the open F file. So for me, I'm thinking that's a success. That break down the F file, everything else is closed for business. This bishop has a nice little activity range. This one does not really. So there's compensation. We have the open file. We've got doubled rooks. So things could be worse. Uh, they try to kick our knight out of there. We kick our queen. And we just shuffle around again. No real like fatal blows being dealt here or blows of any nature being dealt here. Uh, we shuffle around. For the rest of the game, I'm just trying to use these rooks. This bishop will get our queen involved. We'll get our knight involved for some kind of sacrifice on these pawns. The king has like a decent castle here, but I think that we have the firepower here. Um, so that's a lot of this maneuvering. We won't go too much into the specifics, thinking about like battery sacrifices here, but none of them quite work out just yet. Uh, and eventually we kind of like throw away our advantage. We do have an advantage here, uh, again, just with the firepower and our peace placement, but we end up throwing that away with this speculative nice sacrifice. It just allows them to improve their position. Uh, we take the bishop, so they trade our like really good attacking knight with a pretty like steady Eddie bishop back there. Um, so that is not in our favor, and also means that we lose this knight because I was thinking that we would be able to take back the bishop with tempo on the queen and have time to get our knight out of here. But the queen, of course, found a check. Always be checking. So we've thrown away our advantage. They are ahead because they get this knight for a pawn and they also have this lovely open file. So now I'm getting very, very sweaty and I'm thinking, okay, 2000 is not for me. I just, I, I'm not good enough to get there. Uh, that's obviously not true. You can play a bad game and you can get there later on and you can always improve, but that's what's happening in my head. Uh, queen takes in, they take another pawn and we are down three points of material and our attack is starting to fizzle out. So we're getting pretty sweaty. Also, our time is way lower. If you look down here, we have two minutes left. They have nearly seven. So for all our bluster and our arranging of our army early on, it actually starts to look pretty grim at this stage. So let's see how we can go. And obviously, you know how this game ends up. So something happens. Uh, they try to wreak a little bit more havoc and trade off our queens. I just figured with our attack as fizzled as it is and us being so down in material, I don't want to trade queens. I do not want to, like, have even less material to knock on the door. Now, obviously, that's not great, but we just have a little bit of a, 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 a tether of an idea, given that this queen is still trapped, this bishop is still pointing right in front of the king. Like, keeping the queen on the board definitely helps us manufacture something they get their queen out of there and i think now now we can actually start to use our pieces not like this this is obviously a blunder um because that just throws away any advantage we had we were supposed to move the knight across but they don't quite capitalize on it they go into turtle mode they start to just kind of wait out our attack and wait for me to sacrifice something else jubilee and that nearly works for them very nearly, until they make that move, the king move. They needed to move their rook across here to make this sacrifice, which we're about to make, uh, a little less appealing. But they move their king across here, and we get our queen in there with the check. King has to step back, and now we can float on through. The rook takes a sacrifice of the rook in the dying seconds, by the way. Let me just run this back, because I don't think I emphasized how sweaty I was here. But all of these moves happen we make this move with 1 minute and 12 seconds left. And then once the queen drops back, everything is literally just happening. Bang, bang, bang. A second to second thinking. 12 seconds there. 2 seconds there. We're just trying to cave in any sort of victory. I think the game is lost here until they make that king move. And now I'm thinking, okay, queen check. King's very vulnerable. We check with the rook. The pawn takes opening up the floodgates for us. And again, we have 7.7 .7 seconds left. Very, very sweaty stuff. We check with the rook. We check with the queen. And they only have one blocking move. My opponent resigns because if they move the queen across, the bishop is protecting. Our queen can check. Our queen can take with checkmate. Unbelievably sweaty. Five seconds left on the clock when my opponent resigned. And... All of this, all of from here to the end of the game happens in less than a minute for me, a minute of play. And a sacrificial rook to open up the file, to check the king. You're free to check the king. And then the queen is free to deliver checkmate. Again, they've got one block, which they didn't even, to be fair to them, only had five seconds left. Like, 
my advice would be to play that because there's a chance that I just get fat fingers or I don't see the bishop. There's a chance that I time out. Um, maybe not in the spirit of the game, but they were very honourable and they resigned right here. And we crashed on in with a rating of 2001, eking ourselves into that hallowed ground of the 2000s. As I mentioned, doesn't quite mean on Lee Chess what it does on chess.com, but I don't care. I like the big number and we got there. So that is a bit of an update from me. Uh, a couple more videos coming this weekend, but uh, it is Patrick's Day at time of recording. So law, fail, a poor, con, and grieve. Happy St. Patrick's Day to everyone out there. Uh, have a great time playing your chess. All the best.